Mr. Speaker, before I um, make my contribution on this motion, could you allow me to just um, extend deepest th sympathies to the family of Mr. Mathurin Jean from Saldibus, a well-known past teacher who, who served the education industry for over 40 years, 26 years of this. He was um, a principal of the Saldibus School. In fact, he taught my mother and her siblings, so you could well imagine the contribution that he has made to the community. So I want to extend deepest sympathies to himself, to his wife, and their nine, their nine kids. There seemed to be a, a shadow of death, you know, in the community of Shuzal Saltibus in recent times, Mr. Citizen, in that um, quite a bit of um, senior of our senior citizens uh, uh, being taken away from us. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, the substantive motion in front of us today, Mr. Speaker, where the government is guaranteeing $20 million to the NIC for onward borrowing to the SLDB. So, Mr. Speaker, whenever I hear the, the name SLDB come up, you know, I always smile because there is a story that has to be told with regards to SLDB, and today might not be the appropriate time. But, Mr. Speaker, you would recall, you know, um, development banks, you know, normally where governments have their tentacles within, and we must guard very, very carefully that, you know, this practice is not one that con is, is, is continued. So, but Mr. Speaker, there's no doubt in my mind that um, governments need to do a lot more in terms of increasing the housing stock and, uh, and making available properties for St. Lucians to own, particularly in many of our communities where vast amount of lands belong to various family holdings and you know um, there's limited property um, that can be made available for, for housing development. I'm actually very proud that during my time in government I was able to um, develop 146 lots in the Lafag community um, which went very fast as well and, and, and at very reasonable cost, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, there are a couple of questions I would like to ask the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister, with regards to this um, guarantee. And, um, I appreciate the 3% um, rate at which the loan is being extended, but I'm hoping that the government would have had some sort of say with regards to what kind of um, onward rate would be passed on to the to the lender, the borrower, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think it's, you know, very important if the government is playing such a significant role that, you know, they have some input because they, they, the, 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 the funds are supposed to help out. And I heard the Prime Minister speak to, to low income in particular. And, and, and that's my other question. I want to know whether it's, this loan is going to be made available in particular to individuals. I, I, I heard he mentioned public servants, low income. Um, I'm not sure whether the, the housing authority will be a beneficiary of a loan from the SLDB as well, Mr. Speaker. But these are the questions that you know I would like to to to, to identify to, to 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 get answers from the from the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Um, some time ago, in the House, we heard um, the Prime Minister speak to major developments in the housing sector and where. Um, our CIP money would be um, quite significant in terms of developing the housing stock. So I'm taking that this is another incentive and this has nothing to do with this because I was expecting that this would have been a CIP um, funded um, initiative to the SLDB and, and, and not NIC. So maybe there's another 20 million or something coming from the, the CIP at another point in time. But Mr. Speaker, we, uh, while, while you must applaud governments looking at increasing the housing stock, there's also a significant <clears throat> need, Mr. Speaker, for government to pay attention, particularly to our senior citizens um, who at one point in time were 
able to work and, and take care of various um, their needs, Mr. Speaker. But as they have aged, you know, income has reduced. Um, some of them, they, they depend on family. And the conditions of their houses are significantly wanting. And I remember sometime last year, there was an announcement that $10 million would be going into the development of or, 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 or assisting people with their housing needs. Um, I remember receiving a letter from the Ministry of Housing sometime in June last year, indicating to me that the National Housing Assistance Program would be commencing in August, and that I would be a beneficiary as a parliamentary rep for Shozal Saltibus of $100,000 to assist constituents, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I must say, while, while, while you know, the government has come out and they have made a lot of you know, jubilation about extending these funds, Mr. Speaker, but it must be noted, Mr. Speaker, that while it has been over a year that that generosity has been extended to the member for Shozel Saltibus, Mr. Speaker, despite me passing several requests to the Ministry of Housing, Mr. Speaker, up to a day, over a year, up to a today like today, Mr. Speaker, we have not been able to receive that allocation in its entirety. Over a year. Every time, Mr. Speaker, every time I'm hearing the Treasury. The Treasury, Mr. Speaker. Member for Castro Central. I join you because I've not received a cent. Mr. Speaker, you know sometimes... What, what is the point of order? The point of order is the member is misleading the House. In what way? Um, Mr. Speaker, the implication of his utterances is that there was only one allocation made to him. He has to make it clear that two sets of allocations have been made available to him. And he received the Member first one in Central, he was very specific in referring to a letter referring to 100,000. Yes, Mr. Speaker, he has received two letters. But why does he have to say that? Well, Mr. Speaker, because it is, it, is, it is disingenuous to make the public believe that you have only received one letter in three years. I was not of that belief. I was no, 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 Mr. Speaker. 100,000 member. Mr. Speaker, you see, the sad reality is this. When we are in this chamber, there are persons who construe what you say, especially if it is not unequivocal in nature. They construe it in a manner that suits their political narrative. I just want the member to acknowledge that he has received two letters, the first of which he received the total allocation if he did not surpass it, but the records can be made clear, and the second one, he, he may have some outstanding. What is the allocation, the first one? Um, member for Suzel, address the chair, please. Um, I do not see any reason why you should make a reference to no, something no, you wish Mr. not to Speaker, refer to. You see, Mr. Speaker, the member in his bravado, you know, always wants to try to. What did you all give the The first. Member for Suzel, I've made a rule and I, yeah, you Mr. will not Speaker, go back no, to something I've made a no, ruling on. Mr. But I would like to read the. the, the no, but I've, I've, I've made a rule in okay. agreeing with you that you okay. do not have to respond to something you did not raise. Okay, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker, but my point is that it has been over a year, and I have quite a few, you know, people who have come for assistance. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, you know, when you, when you, 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 you are in the political realm, and you go around a community, Mr. Speaker, and recognize the conditions in which some people live, Mr. Speaker, you can well imagine the flood, flooding of requests in my in my in, in, in my office, Mr. Speaker, as it relates to as it relates to people who. Five years, you all get the fellas. Order, please. That would that would goes right at you. No, you sound. Look at yourself in Member the mirror. Suzel, Look in the mirror. Look in Member Vastruzel, please address the chair of your remarks. You are on your feet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I am concerned that it's over a year. We have several people on a waiting list, Mr. Speaker, for some assistance, Mr. Speaker, and, and I'm bringing it to the attention of the House that that, that, that that has not been received, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister 
spoke to, uh, he, 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 he went a little further to indicate some of the assistance that was being given under his administration, and he spoke about education, which, Mr. Speaker, there's, there's been, there's been um, some activity in, 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 in education, Mr. Speaker. But I want to call on to the Prime Minister to look, and I, I had a chat with the Minister of Education this morning, look into the whole issue of transportation of students, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, there are a significant number of parents who cannot afford transportation. I heard from the bus drivers that they privately drive children, contracts with parents, and at the end of the month, parents cannot be the drivers, Mr. Speaker. And we have quite a bit of um, parents who come to me seeking assistance, whether the child can be put on the, 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 the bus. Now, Mr. Speaker, it's on record that the transportation um, budget was reduced, Mr. Speaker, so I want the Prime Minister to revisit that and put in some additional resources with regards, because in the community of Shozel Saldibas, we have quite a few outstanding achievers as it relates to the performance at the CPA. We have quite a number of, of children um, going to school up north, convents and Mary's and all the other schools, Mr. Speaker, and they have to pay transport from Shozel to Viewfort and Viewfort up to Castries and back, Mr. Speaker, and it's taking a toll, a toll on some of the parents, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I'm hoping that the Minister of Education would, would, would take into account you know, our conversation this morning and, and some reprieve could be given to some of these um, parents who are struggling, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, coming back to the, to the 20 million that has been allocated to the SLDB, Mr. Speaker, um, it, 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 one, one of the things that um, struck me when I saw this motion was that later down we have a bill, Mr. Speaker, um, which speaks to the insolvency and bankruptcy. And I was kind of, how ironic, Mr. Speaker, but um, that will come, we will discuss that at, at, a, at a later date, Mr. Speaker. Um, because on one hand you want to help people, but on the other hand there might be a little pressure in terms of how this matter is resolved from the banking end, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, that being said, um, I, 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 of course I must say I, I support $20 million going to the housing sector. I believe there's a lot more that can be done, and I'm looking forward, Mr. Speaker, for a lot more to be done and for the Prime Minister to address some of the concerns that I've raised. Thank you.